please be sure to subscribe and have the bell click for notifications. And as always, have a good morning. Good morning, everybody. So this is going to be a comprehensive video on how um, how you actually save money doing repairs yourself. Um, it's We're going to go over the diagnostic, how to diagnose something simply, um, code scans, parts lookup, parts install, uh, where to find factory specs, and warranties. The first one is diagnosis, which can be really scary, especially if you don't have a lot of experience. The easiest way to actually diagnose your car is to just just find the five W's. The you know where's where's the issue coming from? Is you know what's going on? Uh, who the who is you know is kind of like who like who? What's the part causing the issue? Are your brakes grinding? Is your car pulling to the left? Is your check engine light on? Is your maintenance required light on? You know what. When when you hit a bump, does it make a, like a like a weird noise? You know what's that noise sound like? Um, how often is the noise? Is it all the time? Is it intermittent? Those are the five W's that are going to help you diagnose your issue. So for my problem, the the truck project. Every time I move forward or backwards, the car to, the truck doesn't want to move. And it's because the brakes are locked up. I can feel them. I can hear them. I can smell them because uh, it's it, they get really hot. Um, so the five W's are pointing me towards the brake. Um, and currently, it's the rear brakes. Moving on from there, the code scan. Well, do you have a check engine light? If you do, um, here's a couple options for you. A lot of these auto parts stores do free... Uh, free code readings. You go in there, you say, hey, I have a check engine light. Can you help me? And then they'll actually come out to your car. They'll put their code scanner on. They'll uh, go into their computer and they'll print you off a list of codes, what those codes means. And sometimes they can say, hey, my computer is showing that uh, this part repairs this code 75% of the time. And we can sell you that part today. A lot of times, that is your fastest and cheapest way of getting a car diagnosed. If that doesn't help you, if there's codes that, especially with these newer cars, that the uh, auto parts store guys just don't know, get an inspection. Call a mobile mechanic. See if, um, if their diagnosis fee is going to be cheaper than like a shop. I know that my diagnosis fee was about half the price uh, for a diagnosis as as a normal shop because I just have lower overhead. But some of these big companies, it's it's a quarter of what they charge. Some of these bigger companies charge you two hundred, two hundred fifty dollars just to look, just to pull it in the bay, which is insane. So, um, but a lot of mobile mechanics are. Uh, far more affordable and they do uh, cheaper or I shouldn't say cheaper because it's the same diagnosis and inspections but they do they'll have more affordable inspections once you have your diagnosis or your code read it's time to look up parts and I'll show you guys how I look up parts as well so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull up the internet and we're gonna go to something like rock auto rock auto is a great resource it's a great website let me x x that out here we go so we're gonna look up our dodge it's a 2006 it, and it's a ram 1500 pickup and it has the 5.7 v8 it's got the hemi so and then it actually has rock auto is super easy it has uh, a little tab for brakes okay so brake let's see I think we need brake pads and then it will pull up um, all the brake pads that are available in their system for this vehicle and what I like to do um, so if you go up it'll say economy or they'll say daily driver some of these are, are performance parts, and there's all these different type of brake systems. So 
we can go and we can see, okay, AC Delco. These are for the front. You do have to actually read and say, okay, well, here's AC Delco. Here's rear with eight lug. Well, we, ours is, uh, we're looking for a rear, but we only have five lugs on our vehicle. So that one's not going to fit. Let's keep looking. Extended cab, crew cab. <clears throat> Okay, here we go. Here's the Mopar. This is the the actual manufacturer of this truck. Here's the rear with disc brakes. Uh, and it is for light duty, four-wheel drive. Yep, that's the one. So we're going to add that to cart. And it comes with both tires. And it's $75. Let's find the brake rotors. You can actually see right here, too. Uh, I found the... Rotor, rear, crew cab, pickups. Uh, so it has a crew cab and then it has five lugs. So this power stop uh, rotor is $55. And then what you can do too is you once you know uh, what you're looking for, you can go to the other sites like AutoZone, like, you know, auto parts stores, O'Reilly's. You can call the dealership and find out, hey, what um what are what are you guys selling these parts for that's how i look up parts so now that um we know what parts we're going to get we we buy the parts and now we have to install them well how do i install my parts i use a program called all data and you can actually purchase all data for yourself for your own vehicle so now that we're here in all data, we're going to go to the brake system. So if you purchase this, you can buy it yourself for your vehicle. It's basically having a digital Haynes manual. And this tells you uh, if I go to brakes and traction control, um, disc brake system. This will, okay, we want to replace the, uh, the pads, rotor, and disc. So we're going to hit the repair button. And go to service and repair procedures. And this will actually, we're going to go to the rear. Uh, I have single rear wheels. And this even has pictures. And it tells, it breaks it down. Super simple. All the steps, you can just go down the road. All the steps, it, it has step-by-step. Uh, -step, install the caliper, install the bolts, torque down to 100 foot-pounds. That's for my vehicle. So that is how uh, I find out how to install them to factory spec. So I can get a shop level quality repair for a fraction of the cost. And then the warranty, uh, you need to validate all of the parts that you purchase are fully uh, warrantied. Uh, so it'll tell you when you order the parts or you, you can go uh, to an auto parts store and say, hey, what's your guys return policy? What's your warranty policy? A lot of brake pads have warranties. Brake, they all have warranties on them if they, um, if they don't last. Now that we've gone through and we've uh, diagnosed our issue with the brakes, or we've conducted our inspections, and we've looked up the parts, we've actually purchased the parts, let's go install the parts and torque everything down to factory spec. Let's get it. So we're here with the RAM. This is part of my diagnosis process. I, I get down, I actually inspect the tire, and when I'm looking in at the tire, I I try to like I jack up the, the truck and even try and wiggle the tire to see, you know, if the tire moves back and forth. And it's it there is supposed to be a little wiggle, but this has nothing. This has absolutely nothing. And not only does it have nothing but the truck doesn't want to move and it makes a very loud squeaking noise and grinding noise anytime I drive it, uh, which is, it's fine. We're going to get this fixed uh, after we get it inspected. Right now I'm jacking up the truck and then uh, once the, the truck is jacked up, I'm, I'm going to get a T-stand here in a second to actually share the load between the jack that I'm using and the jacking point and the T-stand. And right here, here I go with, with my T-stand. 
and I'm sliding it into place. I'm going to slide it under the differential. And uh, as you guys can see here in a second, once I lower the truck, what I the technique that I use is I lower the, the vehicle, and you'll see it lower here in a second. And then what I do is after it's lowered and settled, I, I crank the jack back up until it's firm, and it shares the load between the two spots. So we're using our, our Husky Impact with uh, the Husky Power and we're going to remove the tire. There's uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, time lapse in this video, so get used to that. So once you have the tire, it's always safe practice to slide the tire under the vehicle just in case. If you're working on somebody else's car and they have nice rims, don't do what I just did and put a rim down. Uh, I'm okay with that because it's my truck and I don't have nice rims. So right here we're just inspecting everything and it does look like the front pad is okay. The rear pad is at a weird angle and it's definitely seized on there. Everything is, is rusted, corroded, and seized up. Actually, there's a pretty serious spider nest in here that I find. So I'm using my Milwaukee Impact, my red angle impact, and as you can see, about right now is when I realize, oh boy, I should stop because I just wedged it in there. But luckily for me, uh, these Milwaukee impacts are super powerful and uh, it actually let me tighten up the bolt and get it out uh, from that spot. So I learned my lesson. I am not going to do that again uh, because I almost got my, my impact stuck and I would have had to grind out the bolt uh, or cut the bolt to get it out of there. Right now I'm taking the right angle impact and I'm taking the bottom bolt out first and then I'm going to switch over to my Husky battery powered ratcheting wrench uh, to actually take out the top bolt. And don't hate on my tools, alright, everybody's got to start somewhere and this thing's been with me since I started turning wrench and honestly I kind of love it, it it's super helpful. So good job Husky and if you, got, if you use Huskies, cool. Good for you guys. You don't, Not everybody has to use a, a snap-on. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking off the, uh, the actual brake line screw that holds the brake line on. So I'm going to put on my ratcheting wrench. I'm going to uh, break the connection open. And before I take this off, I'm going to get just a, a little clamp. And I'm going to clamp the, uh, the brake line closed. So it doesn't leak brake fluid everywhere. Now you can use, uh, there's, there's hose pliers, there's hose clamp pliers. You can use all that stuff. I'm just using what I have. What you don't want to use is like a pair of vice grips or something that's going to damage that line. So here I am. I took the, the actual brake hose off and all that fluid is coming out of the caliper which I have a uh, spill containment system underneath, so it's fine. I'm getting, uh, I'm getting old Thor the hammer to come out and break the connection between the, the brake rotor. And you can actually see the outline of the rotor on the backside. It was completely corroded. And wait till you see this spider's nest. This is disgusting. I didn't even want to get my fingers in here. But... Um, this is the parking brake. The parking brake was completely gone on the other side. Everything had rusted completely shut. So, you know, I don't have the parts. The parts are on order for this, uh, for this, the parking brake system. So what I'm going to do is I'm still going to replace the pads and the rotor and the caliper. And we're going to have to come back and take all that off to repair the parking brake once those parts get in order. So I take a little brake clean and uh, a clean spray and I spray it down and I'm just going to manually scrub everything down to get the big rust chunks out. And that's, that's the most important part is just getting all the rust and corrosion down and out so that when you put the new brakes on, they're not, they're not hitting that rust. It's not damaging any parts, any loose debris that's in here. You can just see all the rust pieces and parts and just falling out as I'm scrubbing this thing. 
But you want to get all that as much as you can out so that when you start driving, your new brake parts are not scrubbing against rust. What I'm doing here is I always put the rotor on backwards and then I spray it down with brake clean. Uh, I actually run out of brake clean here, so I have to go get a new bottle. So I got the new bottle of brake clean, and I'm going to clean all the oil from the manufacturer off the edge, and then I'm going to flip the rotor around and spray the front of the rotor. I find that you get a nicer cleanup uh, when you spray the rotor down and you wipe it with a towel. I didn't, I don't think I did it on the front side or the back side, but uh, on the front side, I like to do that. Uh, so I'm going to take the rotor off and um, apply Chris's favorite copper anti-seize onto the hub. So this stuff's really good. This is Permatex. Um, I also use fluid film on, on these parts as well, depending on if I, if I have my copper, uh, Permatex, it's not, there's really, I, I haven't really seen a, a, a difference. Fluid film, I feel like is easier to apply. And, um, you know, cause if you get this anti-seize on the bolts or on the studs, you have to, you have to clean it off. Not so much with the fluid film. So yeah, the anti-seize is applied. Now I'm putting the rotor on and it fits like a glove. It's got a little bit of wiggle, which, which I like. And then, um, what I'm doing now is I'm using my metal brush. To actually brush the red uh, anti-seize off of there. Yes, it had red anti-seize, which I have no idea why. Um, but I'm I'm gonna apply the blue anti anti-seize to this one because that's that's all this one requires. So going with blue anti-seize, let it air dry. Now I have my caliper bracket, um, and and all of this stuff. Actually, I got these calipers I ordered off of Summit Racing. So and the uh, the actual disc brakes and the the rotors and, and pads I got from AutoZone, so I was all over the place. They just didn't have the calipers and caliper brackets that I wanted at uh, AutoZone. So now that I got them all nice and lubed up, putting in my brake pads. These brake pads are Duralast Gold, uh, which I've been having a lot of issues lately with Duralast Gold, but these ones uh, slid in like a charm. What I did find now is uh, I had to put in the caliper and caliper bracket as a unit um, because I was having a really hard time trying to get uh, the caliper on when the bracket was on. Normally, I put the bracket on first and then I put the caliper on. This one, not so much. It would not let me do it. So now that our caliper's on, we need to clean up this bleeder screw, or I'm sorry, the, the brake hose screw. So I'm going to take my gloves off because they ripped and I'm going to use the wire brush to get all the dirt and all that debris out of the threads and I'm going to spray it clean. And here we go. We have to remove the little rubber stopper in the caliper. But once that's removed, uh, we will be able to install our brake line hose again. Just remember when you're installing this brake line hose and we're using you're using the screw, you have to replace the crush washer on both sides. Some people forget to do that and then they end up having leaks from the brake hose after they do a caliper uh, swap. What you see me doing here is I'm tightening down the hose bolt with the two crush washers. So I tighten it as much as I can and then I give it a little turn to crush those crush washers down and I rarely have leaks. Uh, this is a technique that I use. Let me know what you do in the comments. But after we have our caliper swapped out, we have to bleed the brake system. So what I, I already did the other side and I already swapped out the other side brakes. It looks exactly like this. So what you do is you start off with finding which wrench fits your bleeder screw. Then once you have the wrench on, you're going to move up front uh, this is how I bleed brakes by myself. I use this little Mighty Vac. It's a fluid dispenser. It allows me to fill it up with brake fluid and actually pressures the pressurizes the system to 15 psi, which simulates 
someone else pushing on the brake pedal basically constantly. So I hook it up to my reservoir and I turn it on and you can actually see all the brake fluid being pushed into the reservoir automatically by itself. Um, just, just by having that air pressure in that tank. So I walk over and I get my homemade uh, uh, brake bleeder so I don't get brake fluid everywhere. I attach the one side to the actual bleeder screw. I put the other side in the reservoir. You do want to make sure you have a little bit of elevation uh, in that hose. And I don't have a whole lot, but I have a little bit. The reason for that is when you crack the hose, you don't want air going backwards into your bleeder screw. And so right there, you can see all the fluid and it's going right into the reservoir. So when I open uh, the bleeder screws, sometimes I, I'll, I'll hit the caliper with my palm and that'll shake up some of the actual air bubbles that get stuck inside. And you'll see once I open this up a little more, you'll see it shook up some of those bubbles. And you wouldn't think that that little, you know, four, five, six bubbles would actually make an impact, but you would be very surprised. It will absolutely make an impact in your brake pedal. So you, you see me here going in for a few more love taps and, uh, and I, I push out a few more air bubbles, but we're done. So I'm going to tighten it up by hand. Then I'm going to use my, my wrench, my 10 mil wrench to actually tighten that up. Then I'm going to be careful uh, once I take the hose off because I don't want to spill brake fluid everywhere. And then I take the, the end of the hose that was attached to the caliper and I just tuck it in to the bottle. And the reason I do that is so that it doesn't uh, leak or fall or anything like that. And that's actually how I store the bottle. So one of these bottles, I can do two or three cars before I have to go dispose of that uh, brake fluid. So in summary, we diagnosed an issue. We uh, inspected it ourselves. We knew we got, we figured out what the problem was. We ordered the parts. We went, picked up, we installed the parts. Everything's torqued down to factory spec. All of our parts are warrantied and we saved an absolute ton of money doing it. If you have any questions on how to do this at home, let me know. Uh, hit me up in the comments. And